welcome back to another episode of the FC Project. Today I'm going to be removing the elbow off the turbocharger so I could delete the catalytic converter inside of it and make some sort of an exhaust. It's going to be short, it's going to be loud. I also did get some of the stuff I use in the FD, which is VR1 2050. I got an oxygen sensor because that one's chewed all the way down to the nub. So this will replace that. So I also did get some Canon oil filters and I also have an oil filter just to run some good oil through it. And that'll change it with the VR1 and a Canon filter. I got the elbow off with the catalytic converter and I must say these bolts for how old the car is, they came off really easy. I barely had to break them. It wasn't like a fight or anything. They just, they just came off. The plan with this is to replace the oxygen sensor. You can see the rodents chewed it all the way down the nub. There's no way to connect a wire to that and delete the cat. The exhaust is made, ran out of gas on the TIG. So I used the MIG and I have an oxygen sensor. This is like a side exit. The oxygen sensor and the downpipe are now on. It hangs a little low because I didn't have another 90, but it should, it should work. It's just gonna scrape a little bit more than, uh, more than it should. <laughs> Just got back from the parts store. I ordered an air filter. Since I had to order one anyway, I got a K&N. Gonna throw this in, put the air box back together, and I should be able to take the car for a little test drive. Installed the air filter and air box and I gave it a little wipe down so it doesn't look so grungy. It still needs a little cleaning, but it looks better than it did. Just soldered the oxygen sensor wire back into the harness. I had to go pretty far back into the harness because the uh, this is what happens on old harnesses. The copper starts to turn green and uh, you want to go as far back until it's not green so it actually gets a good connection.
She drives decent. She has like a weird hang up where the revs stay up high. I think there might be a vacuum leak. The, uh, the brakes don't work at all. So I was using the uh, down shifting and the e-brake, but uh, yeah, she, other than that, the tranny seemed to shift fine. The, uh, the engine seemed fine. Also another thing is this radiator leaks right there. I uh, was trying to get a radiator off a guy locally, but he stopped like literally responding to me. He said he had an aftermarket one. I said, hey, I need it. And then that was the last thing I heard. So I'm probably gonna order a radiator. I was really hoping to have one by Friday, but I really doubt that's gonna happen now. We'll see what happens, but I'm still looking for that vacuum leak. And it could be from this, because this, this hose right here is really hard but I'm not exactly sure yet. So I'm uh, still trying to find these, these little vacuum leaks and everything to uh, plug them. And this thing actually stayed in there, so that was a plus. I'm gonna see if I could get the gauges to work again. The, uh, I'm guessing a fuse pop. There's a gauge cluster fuse. It's a 7.5 amp. I'm gonna check all the fuses, make sure none are popped. This thing's been sitting a while. So we'll see what happens and uh, then we'll go from there. Hopefully the gauge cluster works again. Checked all the fuses, all the fuses are good. I'm guessing the gauge cluster just decided to not work anymore. So I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with that. I'll do that later. I really want the coolant temp gauge to work because uh, as far as I know right now, it's not working. One thing I need to do before I keep driving this thing around, other than replacing the radiator and changing the oil, is get the brakes bled so they work, so I can stop. The master cylinder for the brake system is completely dry. I'm not exactly sure why it is, I'm gonna throw some brake fluid in, see if it leaks out or what is going on because it had to have gone somewhere. Brake fluid usually doesn't just evaporate. Put brake fluid in the reservoir all the way to the top. It doesn't look like it's leaking anywhere. So what I'm gonna do, jack the front up, take the wheels off, vacuum bleed the front, vacuum bleed the back. The brake system is now bled with one exception, the driver rear caliper. I couldn't get it to bleed. I'm not exactly sure what's going on but I pulled vacuum on it and it would not, you know, no fluid came out of that caliper. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. I'm going to drive this thing and see if the brakes work. Uh, the front seemed like everything was fine. I bled it till all the fluid was nice and clear. Same thing with the passenger rear, but you know, we're gonna have to figure out what's going on with this driver rear. But for now, I think the front brakes will work fine. We'll just have some weird issue with the rear driver's side. Before I change the oil in the FC, I'm going to pressure wash the bottom of the engine. It has a lot of buildup from just sitting over time. Looks like the copper washer that goes on the drain plug isn't sealing quite as well as it should, so it's leaking there, and it just needs a pressure wash. What a big difference some degreaser and pressure washing does to the bottom of an engine. The oil pan, you can see it again. The tranny, you can see it. The starter looked like a big blob of hair and now you can see that. Before I clean the oil filter housing off, you can see that everything so far inside the engine has been really clean, including the inside of the oil filter housings.
oil is now changed. What I did was I removed both of these fuses, the EGI computer, EGI injection, so it doesn't shoot any fuel in there, just so it builds oil pressure before I started since I did drain the oil cooler. Now she's building oil pressure. That's good. Well, let's start her. I'm gonna see how the car runs and drives now that the oil has changed. The throttle set screw is also backed out a little bit. So hopefully the high idle isn't so high and everything seems like it's buttoned up. Getting everything sorted on the FC this morning and I went and got some petrol, have the mix, was gonna get a radiator, but the salvage yard, it ended up being missing. So I got some radiator stop leak stuff, the uh, the JB Weld stuff that you like mix it two parts, stick it on, it's just that little end. So hopefully it holds and eventually I can get a radiator for this thing. We're gonna see if the fuel gauge works. I put 10 gallons in, so hopefully it's uh, over half a tank. Let's see if she works, come on baby. Oh yeah, she's moving. She's moving. Working gas gauge. Oh, this is gonna be nice. Only half a tank for 10 gallons. I also got some little trees, wild cherry, and the radiator repair kit. So let's make this baby smell like some cherries without breaking the mirror off. So the radiator is only leaking from this whatever this is supposed to be right here. I don't know if a sensor went there, what was supposed to go there, but it leaks right here. So I am going to fill this with that radiator stop leak stuff. the epoxy where that leak was and it's crazy how hot this stuff got it uh i had it in here and it, it dried really it like set 
super quick and it got super hot and it like melted the plastic on this. So she is all buttoned up. I fixed the coolant leak on the radiator. I also fixed the coolant leak on this sensor. There's still a little bit of residual coolant, but the O-ring on that was pretty much destroyed. Put a new O-ring on it, should be good to go. All right, boys, the FC is now legal. I got the title of my name. I have a temporary tag. Just leaving my old boss's place, Don's sport car. Got some tires for the FC. Over the shop, mounted the tires on the wheels, cleaned the wheels up a little bit. And these tires aren't brand new, but they are pretty new and they're not dry rotted or anything. I put new valve stems in as well. These things should be good to go. And she looks good with new tires. I mean, now I feel safe actually driving this car somewhere. All right, boys, I think she's ready for her maiden voyage. Listen to that exhaust. I got the idle, I think, down. This is pretty cool. It has a shift up light. Look at that. Hell yeah. I was driving the FC and the oil pressure gauge started to creep down, creep down, creep down. Got home, it was like 15 PSI, and then I started back up and now it's zero. What I think is happening is the sensor is uh, just bad because there's a condenser in it. It's bolted to the top of the rotor housing, and this car's been sitting for a long time. It's old and it looks like it's leaking. So what I'm doing is I got my scope out that I've had I've had this thing for like four years and this is the first time I've ever used it. Oh, there we go, look at that. Okay, so it has oil pressure. Some sort. Yeah, it was, it was reading. So I was planning on taking the FC to the drags tonight and then the oil pressure gauge stopped working. The, uh, we tested with the multimeter or the scope and it looks like the oil pressure sending unit is working. It looks like it has oil pressure. I want to fix that. I guess the condensers on the oil pressure unit goes bad, making the gauge cluster not work. Also, the boost doesn't work. The, what else doesn't work? The coolant temp doesn't work. Uh, the speed doesn't work. The tack doesn't work. So we're missing. The only thing that works is the fuel level. And that is usually the one thing that doesn't work always so, so tomorrow i was supposed to take this to estes park now with the oil pressure gauge not working and me not knowing what the oil pressure is which i'm guessing the oil pressure is fine it was fine before when i was driving it was at like 45 or something and uh then it just started to creep down and then it just dropped to zero uh it didn't drop to zero until i turned it off and then try to start it back up it still runs fine so i'm guessing that since it's reading the right resistance and everything. It has oil pressure. Just not knowing what that oil pressure is, is kind of concerning to me and uh, everything. So I'm not gonna go to Estes Park, unfortunately tomorrow, which was the whole reason I got the, the wheels and tires all done and everything. But hopefully next week I could do something with it after I fix this whole situation with the coolant, oil pressure, get everything working. So if you like these videos, click that subscribe button. Also comment below, give this video a thumbs up and uh, see you guys next time.